In this video, we're going to talk about lightning inside Corona for Cinema 4D. In the previous video, we explored the basic settings and the basic concept of uh, indirect and direct lightning and global illumination. So we saw how we can set up in many different ways the Corona render and also how to use the frame buffer, which is this window that we are seeing right now. So this was the previous scene that I'm currently rendering, so I'm gonna close this down because we're going to create a more, uh, a more appealing scene. And I'm going here to renderpeople.com so I can download a 3D model that I can use in my scene. So again, you can see here the various um, models. I'm gonna download this animated model. I'm gonna save it into a folder and I'm going to find here the Cinema 4D format already, as we saw previously. And I've already downloaded and extracted. We already saw how to do this uh, process in the previous video. So I'm gonna download it here and we're gonna use it to create our three-point lighting system. So we need a subject basically, and we need to set up this lighting. Now this lighting system it's used in many different fields, in television, uh, photography, TV series, and many other fields. And I think it's the starting point if you want to learn a little bit how you can use lighting in any software, in any render engine. So we can go here uh, through the Google image results and we can see many examples. So it's a really simple system. It's based on a first light, which is called key light and a second light, which is called a fill light, which is going to calibrate the shadows, and a third light, which is called the back or the rim light, which is gonna illuminate the subject from the back. And this is gonna give us kind of a um, silhouette or kind of a line that is gonna uh, create this three-dimensional effect basically on the subject. So usually every time I create a scene, I do this kind of setup, whether it's a, an interior scene or a single subject scene, I'm gonna use this. Now you can see the key light, it's more intense than the fill and the backlight, so we need to work with the intensity parameters and also I usually work with the colors and I change colors to create uh, a difference between the lights, so it's gonna look more tri three-dimensional. You can see again many examples on how the key light is used. The key light is the most important, which is gonna give the the characteristic to your uh, lighting. And the fill light again is gonna come from the other side. It's gonna work on uh, bal balancing the the shadows. And again, you will find many examples in real life how this is used. You always need to simulate what happens in real life. That's the uh, the basics if you want to do uh, realistic renderings and if you want to create appealing and uh, really nice uh, renderings. So just um, explore a little bit. You can see here we have many examples again on how the different lights are positioned. So you can change position, you can change intensity, you can change color and you can also then experiment yourself. You can create your own system. You can multiply, for example, the, the fill lights or the key lights. You can really do whatever you want, but you your aim is to simulate something that happens in reality. So we're gonna try to build up kind of a studio set, kind of a photographic set. You can see here, it's used also with green screen in uh, uh, video effects. So first of all, we have our subject here, which is in Corona, the, you can see there, we have the Corona file that we can use. So I'm gonna extract this by copying all the, the files. You can see here the preview. This is the Corona file. Click and drag it and try to convert. So here is just read the message and let's try to switch and convert this and just wait a little bit for the model to be imported with the textures. As you can see, we have textures, we have 
material, we have the also animation. So if you press play, Cinema 4D, you're going to see the animation. Now, if you're interested in Cinema 4D, you, you can check our other video course dedicated entirely to Cinema 4D. We're going to go directly to uh, the Corona, but first let's try to create a really simple scene. So I'm going to go to create and I will create a, sp a spline. So, well, actually I'm going to create a shape a rectangle shape and we can work on with this you can see I've, I've placed that in the right side so it's vertical and be sure that the pavement is in the correct position you can see that this is kind of a square around our subject and we will use this to create our studio set so I'm, I'm selecting the object here and resize it and then we can exp uh, well convert it into editable and then we will select some parts of this square we're gonna try to get rid of, of some of this so I'm gonna select the points and you can see that if I delete a point like that it's not gonna work so I'm gonna uncheck close spline and you can see there I have already an opening so I'm gonna use that as an opening and delete also that other pointer and select my entire object so go to the object selection and select the object and rotate it in uh, quantizing fashion so 180 degrees and again if you find it difficult please look at the cinema for the lessons okay now I also want to create a rounding corner there so I will select the point right click and do the um, where it is chamfer there it is so click and drag there you go or you can also define the radius there on the parameters so this is gonna look less straight it's gonna have a nice curve it's gonna look great in the render and again this is usually what happens in reality you have this long uh, panel which is curved in the in the corner there so it's gonna replicate what's in, what's happening in reality now let's select that and go to the generator and let's extrude it and I will click and drag and drop it into the extrude modifier and then I will increase the extrusion offset and then move everything to place my well the the character needs to be in the middle of that scene right there and this is for the for our studio setup Now let's go here and we are going to start to placing to place our light. So I will go to the Corona menu. Let's undock this and select the Corona light. Just as we did previously, I'm gonna move it up first of all. And then I will go here to, in the top view, move it uh, on the front of my subject you can already see it's uh, nicely illuminated and then I will rotate it to make that key light com come from the left side or right side of the subject depends on how you wanna look at it okay you can see I'm rotating it to make it come a little bit from above so again I will move it upward and there you go now I'm just using the preview but you can always run a render test or interactive rendering if you want to test it in real time or almost in real time or you can do interactive viewport you can also set up the interactive viewport you can increase or decrease the quality well you can lock the view and use the render view or use the select the selected view and in details you can increase or decrease the quality now the lower will be the quality and also the faster the render will be otherwise it's the opposite so I'm gonna start and let's wait just a few seconds there we go so you can see it's really low quality but perhaps I don't care right now to see all the details of my subject I just need to see the lighting or I can increase it a little bit more 
restart it and stop it again until I find again correct balance between quality and performance or quality and the speed of the render and now let's restart again and there you go so you now I can already see some details of the textures and of the subject so I think this is this will be fair for me but just test it on your machine now I'm gonna move the light and you can see that I can directly see the effect interactively in my viewport in Cinema 4D so I can decide where my key light is gonna be to create that effect that I want. Now remember the key light is the most important so it's the one that it's uh, characterizing the render so you can also decrease the size of the light by using the yellow grips or yellow handles you can see that if I decrease the size I'm going to decrease the intensity so I need to balance with the intensity so decrease the size increase the intensity 